Aloha, Wormohana. Today I want to reiterate the very, very important information that not all worms are alike. We're so conditioned to think of worms as earth workers because our whole lives, that's really what we have encountered. Um, digging around in the garden, um, messing around in, in fields, putting worms that are rained out of their burrows, sitting on the sidewalk back into the soil. We've really only encountered most of our life earthworms, the earth workers. And the worms that you have now in your composting bins are quite a different group. So I'd like to spend a few minutes just to talk about the difference between the endogeic and the epigeic worms, because it is important that you know this. The endogeic worms are the ones you're familiar with. Endo means within, and the word, the, the root, the word part geic refers to the earth, like geology, geography. So endogeic means within the earth. These are the guys that are solitary. They're tunneling through the earth, looking for bits and of pieces of grass and leaves and other organic matter to consume. And in their mechanical movement through the earth, they're loosening the soil. They're leaving tunnels behind them. So moisture is retained, the soil is loosened so roots can get in there and get a grip, and the, and the soil is aerated. This is all very, very important earthwork, and the worms that do this work are strong and muscular. They have a thick uh, skin called a cuticle, and they are designed physically to do the tough work of aerating soil. These are the worms you know best. The worms we have in our composting bins are called epigeic worms. Epi means upon, geic the earth, upon the earth. These are the surface dwellers, and in nature, they are processing manure. They're somewhere in the straw or the hay or the grass, somewhere where there's a place to hide, and plop, here comes some manure of some animal, and their job is to process it. So they're always feeding on the surface, they're living right below, usually in some kind of carbon material, whether it's grass or straw or shavings or whatever. They're mostly found on farms. And they're doing the job of processing manures. Has to be rich food, has to be lots of moisture for these worms to do their work. So we have adopted them to eat food waste. And we've kind of come up with this vermicomposting idea that you can feed these manure worms food waste and they will process it and poop out that wonderful vermicast that we value to nourish our gardens and potted plants and lawns and so forth. But these are very, very different worms. They cannot, they're not interchangeable. You cannot take that soft, fragile composting worms, which lives in soft, goopy, nutritious food and lots of moisture and fluff and put him into the hard soil and expect him to do the work of the endogeic worms. Similarly, you can't take an endogeic worm, stick him in a composting situation, and expect him to thrive. They will survive, but they're not going to thrive. It's too wet, it's too mucky with decaying organic matter, just not their style. Yes, they are both worms. They are both segmented annelids in the same group, but they have very, very different physiologies they have very, very different environmental requirements. And again, they, they do very different work. Now, people get very confused about this. And I, I, I hear from many people that they thought they were growing their worm colony to put those worms in the garden or into their potted plants. And I'm just horrified, which is why I bring up this topic, because I, I don't want you to do that. Please understand that the epigeic worms need to stay in their composting environment with lots of moisture and lots of food waste. And endogeic worms are best left in the garden, in the field, to do the work of tilling the soil. So there's a big difference, okay? They're not interchangeable. You're gonna kill your worms if you try and do it. It's like asking a little soft, fluffy Pekingese to get into a team of sled dogs and do the Iditarod in Alaska. Yeah, they're both dogs, but they do really different kinds of work and they need different environments to thrive. 
So, want to hear my poem? I got a good one about an endogeic worm. It was written by John Updike, and it's entitled Earthworm. We pattern our heaven on bright butterflies, but it must be that even in earth heaven lies. The worm we uproot when turning a spade returns careful brute to the peace he has made. God blesses him. He gives praise with his toil, lends comfort to me, and aerates the soil. Good one, huh? I really love that line, lends comfort to me, because when I see an endogeic worm in my garden, I'm really pleased that I've got someone in there aerating the soil, tilling it up, loosening it up, making it more suitable for plants. And I'm just as comforted by the epigeic worm in my worm bin that eats my food waste. But I don't have a poem about an epigeic worm. If you feel so creative and inclined, please write one for us. Thanks.